what is going on guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video and today we're finally going to be finishing up the gauge install of course we do need to finish up doing the power to our wideband as well as installing the flex fuel sensor on this 2019 zl1 and once we get that all taken care of i am going to be taking this car out to do some 40 to 100 mile an hour fourth gear pulls so we can get some baselines ready to go for when we finally get the tune installed with the Rotofab big gulp to see how much of a difference that makes. That is loud. So, we're gonna be working here in the engine bay right now, guys. And the first thing we are gonna be installing is, of course, the power. And you do want to use a micro two add a fuse circuit for the wideband. And we're gonna be tapping into our fuse box here. The fuse we wanna tap into is fuse number F42, which you guys see here is a 10 amp HVAC fuse. And we'll kind of route this along this end through the back and through the firewall plug that we actually routed our wideband power from. And we can just run that power wire in and into the inside, tap it into the power wire for the wideband, and then put the ground wire to a bolt in the inside. So that shouldn't be too difficult. And then of course we do have to install the flex fuel sensor. So this is from Gen 5 DIY and it comes with your OEM fuel hose. It comes with your GM sensor and the actual harness, which will plug and play basically to this whole thing. As you see, it comes with the EVAP solenoid plug and play T harness along with your white power wire, signal wire that you're gonna plug into the main harness here on the lowest plugs. So I've got my Adifuse on F42. Got it here routed. It's right crushed in against the plastic, but no big deal. And of course I routed it in between our coolant reservoir and it's gonna basically get routed behind. I will wrap it in some black kind of heat shrink to get it to blend in, but we use this guys the firewall plug hole and it is actually right in the back over there it uses a 10 millimeter nut and then it just kind of twists up and out now one thing i did was it does have these two kind of guides i have gone ahead and cut out one of them completely and that is basically because there's two cutouts and i want the harness and stuff to be able to run through one of the cutouts so leave one to still maintain the locking mechanism but then the other one is where the wires will kind of route and run through so i'm gonna just push this in through that firewall and then we can kind of go ahead and lock this back up and we will be good to go with power from the engine bay into the car okay so here we are guys and this is our power and ground for the wideband and of course this is the power signal so we're gonna tap these two together here but for our ground i'm actually going to be using this little hole here with a screw and a nut this is metal should be framed good got a washer and of course i'm going to be using a ring terminal on the ground and that should give us our grounding point so all the wiring will be nice and tucked here over on the side and that should give us a power and ground to our wideband. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out and see if it works. And there you have it. We've got the ground wire is grounded and our power wire has been connected. And that is gonna be tucked away here in the back. Obviously from this angle, you won't be able to see a thing. So now when we put the car in accessory mode, we should be getting power to our wideband. Of course, the sensor is not plugged in, so we probably will get a sensor error, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and test that right now. And perfect. So there you have it. It does say sensor because obviously we don't have the sensor plugged in. That's not an issue. And 
we already know from before the Aero Force is working properly. So one thing down, now let's get to the E85 sensor, take care of that fairly quickly, show you guys how that is uh, step by step, and then get to doing the baselines for this thing because the tune should begin here shortly this week, hopefully. And that means we get to put the Rotofab, hear the extra whine, and see just how much the car picks up with a tune. So for the E85 flex fuel sensor on the LT4s, guys, at least the Gen 5 DIY. So for the E85 flex fuel sensors on the LT4s, you are going to use very similar to an SS. Now, there are various different companies that make different various power sources. Some go off of a coil plug, which is right here. And mine actually goes off the EVAP solenoid sensor, which is back here in this little plug behind our T here. So different ways to do it. I personally like not touching any of the ignition electronics and going with the EVAP so that we don't have any issues but very simple you're going to remove this metal clip you can kind of twist it out of the way you see it there then we use a fuel disconnect tool which could be provided or might not to pop the fuel hose off make sure you have a little rag or something and then basically install the flex fuel sensor in line with the provided extra fuel hose now I am going to go ahead and route power this way so you, I'm going to orient it to where the plug is facing the driver's side so that the extension, the harness will reach and everything's good. You should have enough wire and of course the signal will actually be routed through the passenger side and because this is where our ECU is and we're going to be grabbing on to one of the plugs on the bottom and pinning using pin 38. Got everything routed. I did a loop around the stock fuel and then the E85 flex fuel sensor is right back there connected here to the stock fuel line and it just kind of sits in the back there doesn't hit anything we're good to go so now we can run the harness the harness is now ran and you can't even tell that there is a harness the ground is on the head cover there so we are good to go and i mean it's all wrapped in the nice automotive tape so you can't even really tell there's a harness goes plugs into the back and on the signal side we did route it around and under these rear wires here so it comes in along the side of the blower and it goes under this main harness then comes across under the harness and then i actually ran it under the fuse box and out because that's where we're going to be pinning it so that it can have slack and go back in so obviously you have plenty of wire so now we can move out of the way and what we want to do is we want to get to the bottom plug here the very last plug we're going to unplug that and pin it to pin 38 and i'll show you guys which one that is so we've got the rear cover and the front blue cover off and when you're looking at it directly from the back guys going from right to left the right side is start off at one and you'll see it marked up in the top so we're going to go to the third row from right to left so look at it in this point here and you're going to start at the very top and count 33 34 all the way down till you get to 38 and you should see a gray kind of like plug and we've got it right on mine right there right next to that blue wire coming down that is pin number 38 so that is where we're going to be plugging in our harness from the ecm for the flex fuel sensor and just like that the plug is back and you see here is that harness and it basically just blends right into everything else guys so once you've got that done that is it the flex fuel sensor is now officially installed you want to do is turn the car on make sure everything is nice and good no fuel leaks and then once you have your tune or if you've already got the tune and have enabled the flex fuel you can actually go into the data logging on hp tuners and see if you're actually reading some kind of ethanol from 93 octane typically has about 10 percent ethanol so if you're reading 10 on 93 you should be good to go but anyways that's it. We've got the E85 flex fuel sensor installed. We've got the wiring for the wideband. So now how about we 
take this car out and do some testing to see what our 40 to 100 mile an hour times are and that way we can have some benchmarks for when it's time to replace this with our rotofab big gulp and the tune guys i'm super excited about that i can't wait to get the tune loaded up shouldn't be too much longer before brett gets us the tune but when he does this thing is going to be a whole another animal and of course we will be going back to the dyno and seeing just how much the car picks up we should have the full 85 flex fuel tune and 93 tune so we'll be able to go to the dyno on 93 and then go back on about e50 or so and see what the car does and picks up with e85 as well so keep an eye out for those videos but for now let's go ahead and clean up right here and get on the road everything's cleaned up and i even ran the heat shielding kind of wire loom there and this right here i actually ordered it a long time ago when i was doing my nitrous wiring and it works perfectly basically hides the power wire from the wideband so that when you look at the engine bay nothing really looks or stands out of the ordinary anyways let's get on the road okay so we've got the draggy running we'll go ahead and turn off all traction control i am in the drag radials so shouldn't have any issue, especially since we're going to be going from a fourth gear 40 to 100. So I don't see us having issue there, but that'll give us some good baseline numbers for us to work with. Okay, so we're going to go fourth gear. So we're in fourth gear and what we'll do is slow down to about 35 miles an hour and then we'll do our 40 to 100 so we're about 35 and go there you go so fourth gear pretty much is exactly 40 to 100 and it looks like we got 5.7 seconds so the car basically almost shifts at 100 miles an hour which is pretty interesting i it's got to be a lot different gearing because my ss i do not believe actually shifted in fourth gear until a little over 100 so it's very interesting to see that it does do that so we'll do one more of those so again we're going to slow down here we got to get to about 33 miles an hour and go I believe we ended up in third gear on that one guys but you can see what a difference gearing makes we're at 5.32 seconds now uh, just by starting in third gear so let's go ahead and do one more fourth gear just so we can have apples to apples comparisons and then go home and talk about the results so we are in fourth gear going to about 35 like before and go so pretty consistent numbers guys 5.65 5.7 and 5.77 so pretty consistent numbers guys this thing is pretty good um, fourth gear pull again we did do a third gear pull uh, on accident and it dropped down four tenths so that just shows how much of a difference gearing makes and I believe I do have some 40 to 100s from when we were obviously at the track and those are gonna be a lot faster than these. But for testing purposes, guys, it's a lot easier for me here on the streets of Mexico to do 40 to 100 fourth gear pulls to really see across the full RPM range, not having to do any kind of real shifting or anything to add other variables in, see how good the car is performing and how well it reacts to different parts and uh, different tunes and so forth that we add on to this car so that is why we do the fourth gear pulls it, just to try to remove as many of the variables out of the equation as possible and really see a true apples to apples comparison of the gains or maybe no gains that we normally would see on the car 
with different types of parts and or tunes. So I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty excited. I can't wait to get the tune guys. Really happy with the car, really happy with the results. Let's go home and compare them to what we saw from my Camaro SS in its best forms and trends. We are back home and I've got all the numbers here on the draggy from today's ZL1 and also to compare with my Nitrous Camaro SS and it's pretty impressive guys. So first off, let's go ahead and talk about the runs from today for the ZL1. Now we've got here and I'll put them up on the screen. Basically a 570, a 565 and a 577, those were fourth gear pulls, 40 to 100. The 5.32 was the car doing a pull from third gear, so it does make a big difference what gear you start in, and that's obvious when you do roll racing. If you ever have done roll racing and you start in a wrong gear, you're gonna be left behind, and it shows here just how big of a difference that is. Now, when we look at these next numbers here, which I'll post on the screen, you see 5.0, 5.05, 4.93. These were the 40 to 100 numbers at the track, guys. So 4.93 being the fastest that I've seen this thing run. Of course, that's from a dig, going from a dig, really getting some acceleration. So it's almost seven tenths to a, almost a second difference, guys, going from a dig to actually doing it from a roll in fourth gear. So starting in first gear versus fourth gear. Here, I'm gonna show up now on the screen. These are the numbers my Camaro SS did. The stage three that you see here, guys, this would be with the Prey Cam. And an NA stage three fourth gear pool was 6.9, 6.8, 6.8. So with NA, my Camaro SS was doing 6.8 second 40 to 100, which is a pretty, slow basically compared to the 5.7 seconds that we're getting here so already the zl1 is about a second faster 40 to 100 than the camaro was na now the camaro was definitely faster in on a 175 shot so with the 175 shot the camaro in fourth gear would do 40 to 100 in 4.5 seconds 4.48 4.5 so that is a kind of a, one of the goals we need to try to get to 4.5 second 40 to 100 fourth gear pulls the nitrous camaro could do that on the 175 shot i don't see the zl1 having a single bit of a problem now 4.5 seconds is going to be the goal with to beat for sure because we want to be faster than we were on the nitrous camaro with the zl1 so We'll see just what it's going to take to get to that same level on the ZL1. In the meantime, comment down below and let me know what you think. You, do you think this car will get to the four and a half second range with just the intake tune and some E85? I don't know if it will, but after we do some headers, I don't see that being an issue. We'll just have to wait and see, guys. So that's part of the excitement with this car. It's a whole new platform, really, with the LT4 engine and the boost compared to nitrous in na so i'm super excited but with that being said guys i think i've gone long enough let me know in the comments down below what are you guys thoughts on those numbers a lot of people do 60 to 130 comparisons but i'm trying to be as responsible as i can and be safe out in the streets of mexico so 40 to 100 is the best way for me to really dial everything in and remove as many variables as possible and be safe. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.